Hi guys, we have had a record-breaking snowfall this year. We've had over a meter of total accumulation. That's here, and uh, it has settled, of course. Every time it snows, it settles a little bit. And uh, we're left with 24 inches or two feet, which is about 65 centimeters of snow from my driveway. On my lawn, it's gonna be even deeper because the snow has built up on my driveway a little bit. But what this gives me is a really great opportunity to show you how effective snowshoes are. Most of the snowshoes in our house are these modern ones, uh, usually with a metal rim around them and, and some plastic or Teflon or something um, in them. Um, and they're great. They're, they're great, especially for kids. These bindings, these, these ratchet bindings are excellent for kids, um, but they don't give you very much flotation in deep snow. These more traditional style snowshoes give you a lot more flotation. And uh, this is a great opportunity to do a demonstration. First, let's try walking in this snow without any snowshoes to see how far I get. <laughs> oh man, I am up to my hips for sure, almost my waist, and uh, it is tough going. I've only taken three steps. I'm tired. Um, there's no way I could get very far in snow like this if I was trying to travel in the forest. <laughs> this is a real struggle. Once you make a trail, life is a lot easier. So I'm gonna try uh, these ones. They look a bit uh, traditional because they're wood, but they are really a modern style. Um, I'm trying I'm gonna use these ones to give them a fair chance because they're much bigger than the ones that are owned by my wife or my kids um, It's all about flotation. It's all about how uh, Much surface area you have underneath. So let's give these a try <laughs> Whoa Well, that's not very good. Let me try that again. These snowshoes sink and twist quite a bit and uh, makes it very difficult to walk in. I lose my balance with almost every step. Smaller snowshoes like this are considered more maneuverable, but uh, in snow this deep, it's really, really <laughs> difficult to turn around with them. I have to actually back, back out of this of this path. Well, that didn't go so well. Those uh, small snowshoes, I sunk almost right to the bottom, except for the last five or six inches. That's about uh, 15 centimeters. Um, so, so they're largely ineffective. As I got further back, where the snow is packed more because I have a snowblower, it, it throws the snow quite a distance and that snow is packed. Um, it gave me a little bit more flotation and they're pretty good once I had a packed trail. Um, but if you walk around in the forest around here, you're gonna really struggle because uh, it's gonna be all fluffy um, and you're gonna sink more than, well more than halfway to the bottom. Let's give these larger traditionals a shot. It's still difficult to get started and the snow is still quite deep, but I have a lot more balance. Uh, I'm not sinking as much. The snow is uh, so fluffy and deep that I would still benefit from using some hiking poles. But um, these snowshoes give me enough flotation, especially when I get back to where the snow blower through the snow, uh, that I can turn around in. Um, I couldn't do that with a smaller pair. And going this far was, um, was a lot easier. 
I took my tape measure out and measured and, and uh, you know, I was sinking about uh, a foot and a half or more with these and I was only sinking less than uh, 12 inches with these. So um, it's still fluffy, it's still hard work to uh, snowshoe. But if you're going to break a trail uh, in fluffy snow, you're going to want a pair of these snowshoes. So these conditions are awfully extreme. That's an awful lot of snow it's an, and it's an awful lot of fluffy snow. Snowshoes are rated for the person's weight, but that really doesn't make a lot of sense. It all depends on the conditions of the snow. Both snowshoes performed an awful lot better. Once I got back further uh, towards where my snowblower throws the snow, that area is more compacted. It doesn't look higher, but it's more compacted and it's easier to float with either pair of snowshoes for sure. Uh, but certainly in the fluffy snow, the deeper fluffy snow, these traditionals outperformed the more modern snowshoes. So why is that? Well, well, number one, the traditionals are going to have a lot more surface area than almost any um, uh, modern style. Uh, the other thing, and some people sort of discount this, but the other thing is these are full of holes and uh, that allows the snow that falls on top to fall through the snowshoe. So when you lift your foot, after you step, snow is going to accumulate on top of your snowshoe, you lift your snowshoe and that snow, especially the fluffy snow, will fall through these holes. These more modern style snowshoes, most of them don't have that. Some of them, um, my other pair has some. These ones have some holes and uh, that really helps, but uh, it certainly doesn't have the number of holes um, that this one does. It's one of those really interesting situations where the more surface area you have, uh, the better you float, but the more holes you have, uh, the better you can walk in. So some of you might be wondering uh, about the point in these snowshoes. These are Algonquin style snowshoes. Uh, Huron style tend to have a rounded front. And uh, I've always liked the pointed style. My father always had a pair and I sort of uh, followed in his footsteps, so to speak. And uh, I've learned to like the pointed style. What I like about them is that when you're walking in uh, the forest in an area with lots of shrubs or saplings, um, I find it much easier to walk through those, those conditions. If you have a sapling or a shrub in front of you, you can angle your snowshoe left to right. And uh, if this is my left foot, I wanna keep the, the, the shrub or the stem to the outside uh, instead of walking over a tall shrub. Um, I'll just angle it a little bit. That point will catch on the inside of a, a, a sapling or a shrub. And as I move my foot forward, the snowshoe is gonna glide along it and, and keeping myself from getting tangled up on a, on a shrub or a sapling. Um, the rounded ones, you have a little less control of that. Um, it's a little bit more hit and miss and, and sometimes you'll end up walking over a stem. All right, that was a very short demonstration, but I hope it illustrates for you the difference between traditional and modern snowshoes and their effectiveness in deep fluffy snow. Uh, nothing wrong with the modern snowshoes. They're great, but you're going to want to use them on a trail that's already packed. If you're going to be traveling in deep fluffy snow uh, into the forest and breaking your own trail, you're really going to want a pair of the traditional snowshoes. Uh, we own a lot of the, the modern ones and that's because we've had a lot of kids and we uh, have snowshoe trails on our property and dad would break trail with his traditionals and the kids would follow with the moderns and uh, it's, a, it's a great system. It works very well. So guys, thanks for watching. That was a fun video to make. I have been waiting since last year when we had very good snow conditions for this and then it melted before I could make the video. So I've been thinking uh, about doing this uh, quick little thing for about a year now um, and I'm glad I finally got a chance to do it. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please hit like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.